In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. A resource I often use when I'm preparing my sermon started their reflection for this week with the phrase, if you are planning to preach on this obscure festival of the presentation of Christ in the temple. Obscure. I bristled immediately. This is the feast of the presentation of Christ. This is a great feast, a great feast for us here in this place dedicated to Christ. And for many ordained in recent years, myself included, a feast of personal celebration. But more than these reasons to counter the claim that it is an obscure feast, the celebration of this feast at this time of the year challenges us and our penchant for chronological causality. It challenges us to understand God's time as not running to our human time frames. It challenges us to see God outside time and place and yet in every time and place. And this, this is not obscurity, but God both beyond and in is a cause of rejoicing. In today's gospel, we have the wonderful yet troubling encounters with these two heroes of the faith, Simeon and Anna, and we hear their words of joy, of prophecy and of promise. The gospel writer, in a very typically Lucan way, gives us tantalizing knowledge about these two stalwart souls, each given enough of a character sketch that we know and trust them, and we recognize that their hearts are not immune to sadness either. Simeon has waited all his life. Anna has lived a life immersed in grief. This makes their words all the more poignant, all the more empathic and emphatic as they speak to Mary and Joseph. And Mary, Mary who has been treasuring these things in her hearts since the visit of the shepherds, treasures these things too. But wait a minute, the timing seems to be slightly out. Haven't we moved well from the idyllic nativity scenes and a baby lying in a manger? Didn't John baptize Jesus just a few weeks ago? And last week, didn't we hear Jesus calling Andrew and Simon, James and John? And what's this today, suddenly? Suddenly we're back, back 40 days from the birth? This celebration today of the feast of the presentation at the start of February takes us back to Christmas, but also, thank you, that's um, the equivalent of a highlighter, but also for kaleidoscopes us straight into Easter. One twist of the lens and our gaze and we see a baby lying in his mother's arms and all is holy and all is bright. We twist the lens again and suddenly we see piercing swords and spears and women weeping at the foot of the cross and treachery, betrayal, secret thoughts and salvation. Simeon's proclamation is both beginning and end, the beauty the sheer beauty of Nunc Dimittis. Now, Lord, let your servant go in peace, as Simeon lets go of life, is subsumed in the greater light, the light for the Gentiles, the light for the world. To relegate this feast to obscurity is to relegate the salvific love of God to being an optional extra. What we see in today's Feast of the Presentation is that God's love cannot be contained by time frames. 
It spills forth from Simeon and Anna in words poured out with an intensity which gives scarce attention to the wider audience for the light of the world is with them. Into this busy scene, light bursts forth, seen by these two faithful souls. Into the messiness of the maelstrom of humanity, salvation is proclaimed. The theologian Joy Moore writes, though Luke does not quote the words of Anna, he conveys their content as confirming the arrival of the one who sets the people free. It is Anna, not Simeon, who is the prophet. Both have faithfully awaited the intrusion of the faithful God. Both now witness to the arrival of peace on earth. Our announcements of Christ's birth into human history should render sufficient joy that the present circumstances cannot diminish the intrusive signs of God's peace. The world, our world, this world into which God sent God's only Son, needs much proclamation of the love of God at this time. Fears over growing tension between nation states, wars in Ukraine, the land of the Holy One, the Sudan, Myanmar, the list goes on. COVID still with us, as we await a day of close to 40 degree temperatures, our increasing awareness of climate change, to name but a few of our concerns, take us to a place very quickly in which it can seem that the love of God and the truth of salvation and peace on earth seem very far away indeed. We want things to run smoothly and in good order. We do not like the intrusions and interruptions into our settled lives. And yet it is often in these moments that we see God most clearly. We need to be like Simeon and Anna, pouring out our words like libation on a thirsty land seeming on the one hand to be unconcerned with whoever hears our proclamation, whoever might be gathered in the midst, and on the other hand, giving our utmost and fullest attention, for Christ is here. This year, I have said before, is a year of focus on our discipleship on living our baptismal promises, living as disciples of Christ. And living as disciples of Christ, we are called to shine as lights in the world. Like Simeon and Anna, pouring forth the proclamation of God's love beyond time, in time, for all time. Simeon and Anna's proclamation was not without cost, and nor will ours be as disciples. Salvation is not cheap grace. But if we do not speak, if we do not live our discipleship, if we do not proclaim it in word and deed, then we run the risk of falling into obscurity and that is not our call, for the light of Christ is with us. Amen.